How's it going today, everybody? Thanks for watching another video. Uh, nerve pumping crew started dropping off some equipment here yesterday. Got the hose laid out this morning. I don't think they're pumping quite yet. I don't hear the, the engine on the truck running over there with the pump on it. We've got this smaller one here, and then a bigger one to the left there. That'd be our middle lagoon, we call it. So that one's um, maybe three quarters of the way full. And we've got just those uh, two lagoons to do. With. So that uh, that semi truck that's sitting there, that's. Uh, Two motors on the back, one is running a pump that's uh, connected to the back and one is running a pump down at the end of that uh, that green. It's a, an old wheel pump that they put their own pump on I guess or it's a new hydraulic driven pump at the end of that and that's so it's pumping down at the bottom where the where the inlet is, it pumps it up to a, a motor or pump on the back of the semi and then from there it's uh, going through the field and I think they've got one, maybe two pumps in the, in the line going to the field. The field that we're pumping to first is uh, about three about three miles, I guess, uh, northwest of the dairy. And they have to go uh, through culverts under the road uh, in a couple places to get there. And uh, typically every mile, mile and a half, I think they like to put another pump in there just to keep that manure flowing as uh, quickly as they can. The more they get done, the quicker they can get to the next job. So they should be uh, going here pretty soon. I saw they had their tractor sitting out in the field already. Probably just uh, finishing connecting some hoses and getting the other pumps put in line and connected. And they always like to get it agitated a little bit before we start so that every gallon that's being pumped out is uh, as consistent as we, as we can get it. We want to put a consistent and, uh, amount and nutrient dense amount on every acre that we're applying. That's what we've got going on here in the next couple days. It's the next day here. I wanted to go look at the applicator and show you guys how it works, but I couldn't get to them. The hose was in the way where they're at now. I'd have to go over the highway. And I took the side by side, so I don't really want to do that. So I thought I would uh, come to the part of the field that they were working on yesterday and kind of show you guys uh, how it looks like. Uh, just after it's been uh, manure has been applied on here so you can see there's no there's no manure on top and it's I means there's a little bit of moisture there from the manure soaking into the ground but it's uh, it's a kind of a straight disc straight wavy disc and then uh, the manure is dropped behind that slot that that disc makes and they they essentially just uh, drag back and forth uh, over the field at about a 45 degree angle that makes uh, pulling the hose a little bit easier on the tractor. They, uh, I think they might finish this field today and then they're gonna get started on the field on the south side of the tree row on the uh, east side of this field. If I get some time this afternoon I want to run over there and get some video of that if I can. It's uh, kind of uh, interesting to see and it uh, works pretty good. They're uh, instead of hauling the manure with tanks, it's just pumped to the field and they drag the hose back and forth with the uh, applicator. So there really isn't much stopping or pausing. You know, they, the only time they have to stop is when they have to go to a new part of the field or to a new field. So it's pretty efficient and it keeps all that traffic off of the road also. Don't have to run, run over the road with uh, trucks and tankers or tractors and tankers. So it, uh, Works pretty good. They can get quite a bit done because they're constantly uh, moving that manure. Conditions seem to be pretty good. It's been pretty dry here. I thought the ground maybe would be on, on the hard side, but it looks like they are able to penetrate into to the ground pretty good and get that manure into the ground and uh, somewhat covered up. It doesn't completely cover the trench, but it's uh, yeah doing a pretty good job, it looks like. Got a little leak on the back there. Got Ian and Eli with me. Coming to look on the field. Looks like one hose has a little bit of a break in it. They, they finished the first two fields. The, didn't get a chance to film over there. They were they finished the second field the, this last night or early this morning, I think. 
because they typically will go through through the night. Is that a lot of cow poop? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fertilizer for the corn. I'm gonna do all this poop. Hmm. I'm gonna do that with all this poop. We put all the poop on the fields, Ian, for the corn. It's fertilizer. Sounds like we have an, about enough manure to get this field finished up and then our manure storage will be about empty and we'll finish the, the rest of our fields that are going to be going to corn in the spring and then we have one field of our neighbors. They wanted to do some uh, ditching before we put manure on they weren't quite finished with that so we'll, we'll do that field in the spring also. Had a lot of people in uh, previous uh, manure spreading videos comment on why we spread manure in the fall instead of in the spring before the before corn is planted and just uh, where we are here uh, climate wise weather wise we don't always have a lot of time in the spring we can often have wet springs and our heavy clay soils it takes a while for them to dry out so the less we can do in the spring the better typically we saw that this spring uh, was a pretty good example it was the middle of June by the time we had all of our manure applied and, and corn planted which is uh, a lot later than we'd like to be. The tractor's a little dirty, I think it's time for a bath. try to uh, apply as much manure in the fall as we can as typically conditions are pretty good in the fall we're, we're usually pretty dry this time of year get it done just before things uh, cool off and freeze so that we can still get it into the ground but uh, seems like it works uh, best for us here where we are it helps that we have uh, clay soils heavy clay soils so they're uh, our soils are good at holding on to nutrients uh, if you have sandy soils and it's uh, be a little bit more of an issue then there's a lot more chance of uh, the nutrients uh, not staying where where we put them but that's uh, that's kind of the reason why we don't want to do it in the spring because our heavy clay soils take a long time to dry out and they hold a lot of moisture but on the flip side they also hold a lot of nutrients so we're that's not uh, too big of a concern especially if we're uh, putting it into the ground like we are incorporating it into the ground should we go see what Opa's doing Ian yeah, yeah? it's a couple days later here I'm in the field right next to our manure storage the farm is just on the other side of the manure storage there so we ended up getting probably uh, I don't know about a 100 150 probably about 160 acres on the field right around the farm here uh, with manure applied to it they squared it off so that uh, it'll be easy for them to continue in the spring the our manure storage is uh, it's not completely empty but it's uh, pretty darn close so uh, where, where we want it I guess we want to go into winter with uh, empty manure storage then uh, gives us some flexibility in the spring then we can apply what we need to to uh, make it till next fall if we have a wet spring be nice to have a good spring after the spring we had this year with all the rain we had but we'll just uh, see how it goes it's uh kind of looks like it was about perfect timing here to wrap up the ground is frozen already we had uh, pretty cold temperatures last night We're supposed to get above freezing here today and tomorrow but then it'll be uh we've got some uh, forecasts in the teens fahrenheit at night time so it's uh, gonna cool off pretty quick here with some snow in the forecast as well we're kind of on the edge of a of a system where we can get get a foot of snow it looks like we got some some geese going south here for the winter I think they know it's winter time also 
My plan was to uh, make this uh, manure spreading video or liquid manure spreading video, but it was so darn windy the last couple days that I didn't get a chance to fly my drone at all and I didn't even really want to go out to the field either. It was uh, 40, 45 mile an hour sustained winds yesterday with 60 plus mile an hour gusts. So it was uh, kind of terrible. Seems like it's always windy here. You guys probably hear me say that all the time that it's windy, but yesterday was definitely uh, extreme. There's uh, some grain silos south of the farm here, half mile, where farmers can sell their grain. And they had a roof blow off of one of their bins, I saw. Not sure if it has grain in it or not, but it's not good either way. We didn't have any damage at the farm, but we did have some plastic come loose on our silage pile. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys that here quick. We've never had, had that happen before. So we'll have to take the sand off on the side, take the tires off and get it re, uh, repositioned so we don't end up with any spoilage. I'm uh, by our silage pile here now. So this silage started to come loose yesterday. My dad put a couple straw bales on, or a couple uh, grass hay bales on here. It's uh, just this side, and it, I mean, the plastic looks tight now, but this plastic here, it caused this bottom plastic to slip out of the top up there. So they, they got to pull back some and put these bales on it, but that's uh, silage right there. And I thought we had yellow past this point, but we don't. So the, the uh, clear plastic, the yellow plastic, the oxygen barrier, they call it, started right here also. So we've got exposed silage right here. So this, this was uh, with the clear plastic on it, so it's one it's uh, one piece of plastic with the durable plastic on top and the clear plastic molded to the bottom of it essentially is what it is. And this is the two two layers, so we put the clear on and then we put the, the regular plastic on top, the durable plastic. So we're, we've got to pull the sand off here off the bottom, get those uh, hay bales moved, get the tires moved, get the bottom piece of plastic put back in place where it should be and get the and then get the top piece of plastic put back over top of it I guess kind of get things straightened out a little bit better and then we're gonna add some lines of tires we've been taking tires off of the silage pile in the field that we've been feeding from so we're gonna add a couple lines of tires on here make sure that doesn't come loose again not the end of the world now cold temperatures so I didn't we're not gonna real, it's not gonna cause any spoilage but we definitely want to get that sealed up as uh, good or better than it was before so it doesn't happen again so we don't want that happening in the summertime we're uh, seeding some grass uh, in a, a few spots where we did some dirt work we we did some by my mom and dad's driveway here and I just brought the the cedar back just a little one that we a broadcast spreader that we pulled behind the four-wheeler just brought it back to the farm for my mom and dad's. My dad's harrowing it a little bit over there. And then we have to do some uh, by the scale here. Oh, my hair is really crazy. <laughs> we have to do some by the scale here too where we did some dirt work. Jose Luis went to grab a couple of rakes and um, I'm gonna meet him over there. We'll get this leveled off and raked up a little bit. Then we'll spread the seed, go over it with the harrow. Then hopefully we get a little bit of rain in the spring to get that grass seed growing. Just uh, seeded this here next to the next to the scale. Say Luis is making it empty. There's a little bit of a brown spot there where we push snow all the time. A lot of the grass winter kills. You can see the just some uh, pasture grass. Nothing really special. Then we've got the harrow here. We'll hook the harrow up to the back of the four wheeler and. Uh, Drag that across this once or twice. Just try to work in some of the seed. We don't really need to work all of it in, but as, as long as we get a little bit of uh, seed to soil contact and we get a little bit of moisture in the spring, a lot of this should start growing, or at least that's the idea, anyways. 
If not, I got a few extra bags. We can uh, spread some more in the spring. I was hoping to have a little bit more time for uh, some fall things, but it it went from uh, from summer to winter without really having a fall. It almost seems like it was 70 a week ago, and now we're gonna have uh, zero Fahrenheit here in a couple days at night. So it's quite a change. Not really good for the cows and calves, but can't do anything about it. Just have to deal with it. Still waiting for tin for the scale shack. I think I ordered it probably two months ago now. Still hasn't shown up yet. I um, picked up a passenger. You want to say hi, Ian? Uh. To fix a, I had a flat tire on my pickup that I dropped off at the tire repair shop last night. I picked that up and I went and put it on. And Ian heard me, so he wanted to come with me. And I. Didn't want to turn them down. Hi! <laughs> I think we'll uh, end this video here. Appreciate you guys watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video.